So now that the vehicle is raised and supported, we need to remove the hubcap here. When you remove these nuts, you're going to look for something that looks like this. It has a little uh, notch in it, okay? And that's the one that has the nut that holds the uh, hubcap on. The other ones are just, you know, aesthetic or whatever you call it. So on this, because it has these where you can add air, that's obviously where the nut's going to be. If yours doesn't have these, then you're just going to have to look for the little slot, okay? Grab your inch and an eighth socket. And those are the only two that you're going to remove. Grab that. Just grab this. Just going to pull these through. Next, let's remove our 21 millimeter lug nuts. Spray down this area with some penetrant. There we go. Now it's going to be time to remove the caliper from the bracket. To do that, you're going to remove these two bolts using a 16 millimeter. That's what it looks like. I'm just going to set it back in a couple threads just so it holds it for me. Grab a small pry bar, remove the caliper. There it is. Always take a peek along here and make sure you don't have any rips, tears, or any type of fluid seepage right there. If you do, you need to replace your caliper. This one looks great. I'll set it aside. Now we're going to use a 24 millimeter socket and remove this bolt right here and that bolt right there. That's what holds the bracket over the rotor and everything. That's what our bolt looks like. Remove the bracket, set it aside. So next we're going to remove these 18 millimeter headed bolts right here and we're gonna draw out the axle a little bit. When you do that, it's gonna break the seal and fluid's gonna come out, so you need to make sure you have a collection receptacle down there waiting for you. So now I'm just going to use a hammer and I'm going to try to bonk right along this ridge and just try to pull out the axle a little bit. Once I do, I'll use a pry bar and continue from there. There's our fluid. There it is. This is going to be the seal. Uh, you always want to replace these. So now we need to remove this locking nut right here, and it's a special type of nut. You're going to see four little slots. You need a socket that looks something like this. It has the little pitons. They fit in there. Use your half-inch drive and remove this. So I'm just going to take that nut that we just removed and just put it back on just a couple threads here so that the rotor and everything can't fall off because we're going to need to continue on by loosening up the emergency brake a little bit and then bonking on the back side of the old rotor to remove it. So next we need to de-adjust the emergency brake. To do that, there's a little rubber boot on the back side of your backing plate. Remove that boot. And then you're going to see a little star adjuster in there. You're going to adjust that to the point where you can spin the rotor without any resistance and then hopefully we'll be able to remove the rotor at that point. I'm just going to use this little tool right on that star. It seems like it's getting tighter, obviously, just go the opposite direction. So 
So now I'm going to bonk on the back side of the rotor and I'm just going to try to make sure that I can get this to come out by keeping it safe by making sure that this nut is on here. I'm just going to take this nut off of here. When you go to remove this, you're going to notice that the outer bearing is going to want to try to come out. Now at this point, there's nothing really holding this on, so we're going to continue out. There's going to be a lot of fluid sitting inside this hub area right here. So just tip it and try to get it into your collection receptacle. There we go. So now we're going to use an inverted torque socket, number E18, to remove these bolts. going to bonk the rotor and try to separate it from that hub. Okay, it's hard to tell, but it's starting to separate down along here. If you needed to and it wasn't separating, you could also use some penetrant. There's our rotor. So now we need to remove this seal right here. It's always a good idea to replace seals anytime that you have to remove them from a vehicle. So I'm going to use some penetrant. Go right along that edge, and we're going to let it sit and do its job. Now we're going to make our way over to the vise. So we put our hub inside the vise. You can see the seal right here, and of course your bearing. You don't want to damage the bearing. Take a nice long pry bar, and you go like this. And it should start pulling the seal out of this hub area, okay? If it doesn't want to come out doing that, because maybe your vise is on a bench that moves around too much and it's annoying, um, I'll show you what to do then. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put my pry bar down along that seal just like this. I've got my safety glasses on and I also have a teammate that's going to help me. They're going to use the air hammer and they're going to hit right up against this pry bar and help me drive this seal out of here. Here we go. Whew. All right, let's give it a spin. Try pushing like a little bit as okay. you go, like a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. So there it is. Make sure you grab that bearing. You don't want that to fall and hit the ground. There's our seal. We're just going to take our rag and try to clean out as much of this gunk as possible. Could use a little bit of parts cleaner if you felt the need. Spray this down with some parts cleaner. So we'll just check our bearing to make sure that there's no metal shavings or anything like that. This bearing's still in really great condition. I'm just gonna put it right in here. Now we've got our seal. This is a two part seal. Okay, it comes as one assembly, but it is actually two pieces. You're going to notice there's a little spring that runs along in here that holds the rubber up against there. You need to make sure you coat that with something just so it doesn't end up falling off. I like to use a little bit of Vaseline because it's something super thin and it'll just kind of melt off. Just go along here. You don't have to fill it in or anything. It's just enough to keep the spring on there. That looks pretty great. Come right up along here, just like that. So now it's time to get the seal on here. You'll notice that it kind of bounces around a little bit. So keep that in mind because as you start using your punch, you're gonna go along this edge here, by the way. You don't wanna go up on here, you're definitely not right along there. Right along this outer edge, closest to the hub, okay? As I start bonking this down, this side's gonna wanna lift up. Bonk this side down, this side comes up. It's gonna happen a couple times. Once you get it so it's starting to go down nice and even, it should go down better that way. like that. <laughs> oh. 
I'm just gonna grab a soft piece of wood and I'm gonna start this in nice and level. Just make sure it's down all the way around. That looks great. Let's clean it up and move along. So we have the bolts that held the rotor to that hub. You need to make sure you clean them up and get off any of that existing thread locker. Let's get our rotor up on here. Line up those holes. I'm just gonna grab a little bit of thread locker and I'm gonna make sure I put it on all of our bolts and then start them in. Snug them up, going in a crisscross manner. I'm just gonna make sure they're all tight. I'm gonna take a tiny bit of this Vaseline. Just go right along this seal lip here. We're gonna clean up our braking surfaces. You have your inner braking surface on the rotor, the outer on the other side. And then of course, you don't want to forget where the emergency brake shoes ride. Let's clean down this area. Make sure you have your collection receptacle down there. And safety glasses, of course. This area right here is very important to make sure that it's clean. Especially right up along here, which is where the seal's gonna ride. That looks good. We also want to make sure we clean down the emergency brake shoe area. Now is a great time to check your emergency brake shoes. We'll let this dry and we can continue. So now I'm just gonna use a little bit of penetrant. I'm gonna go right on the star area here. Then I'm gonna go right up here. This is the emergency brake pivot. As you pull on the emergency brake or step on the pedal, it expands this, expands the shoe and stops the vehicle in case of an emergency. It's also good for when you park. Put that in there, let it soak in here. Take some of your manufacturer specified gear oil and you're just going to squirt it all the way inside there. Try to fill up that hub area. There we go. Nice. Get a little coating. Slide that in there. Okay, so we know that the hub's full of gear oil. That's going to lubricate all the bearings on the inside and on the outside as the differential tips. We've got our special nut. It's got this little piton. It's going to slide right into that slot. Okay. See if we can get this started on there. Sometimes it's a yes, sometimes it's a no. So now I'm just going to snug this and I'm not going to go too tight because we are going to torque it to manufacturer specifications. Give it a couple spins. Okay, it stopped. That's enough for me. Let's get those torque specs. Let's torque this to 70 foot pounds. It's gonna be three stages. Okay, there's 70. Now you're gonna loosen it. Uh, it says to loosen it approximately 90 degrees, but basically just break it free. And now we're gonna retorque it again to 18 foot pounds. There we go. So now I'm gonna take a pry bar. I'm gonna go right up along this stud right here and then over to where the e-brake pivot is. I'm just gonna give it a little push and I wanna see how far that goes. That goes really far. That means that it's completely de-adjusted. We need to adjust this to the point where it only goes approximately that far 
and it stops this from wanting to spin. I'm just gonna keep adjusting this. We're listening for drag here. Let's check it again. Okay. Okay, that feels good. There's very minimal drag. Um, you have to remember that the more drag you have, the more heat you're gonna have inside your brakes. So if you try to spin this, and it spins like this, ugh, that's way too tight. You need to de-adjust it. If you can take it and you can spin it like that, you can hear it minimally hitting, and you have minimal movement right here, you're doing all right. That feels great. We've got our rubber boot. Make sure that you reinstall that back inside the backing plate. Make sure you get this old seal off of here. Clean up the area where the seal's gonna ride, which is right along here. If you feel as though you have any raised areas along this, just clean it up. So I just grabbed a little bit more of that Vaseline and get it on my fingers. I'm gonna coat this gasket right here. I'm gonna put it right up along this ridge. Carefully install this into your differential tube. Line up the holes with the holes on the hub. And grab our bolts, put on a little bit of thread locker. We'll get them all started. Once they're all started, then we'll continue by tightening them up. We're gonna snug these up in a crisscross manner. Double check, make sure they're tight. So I put my nice long pry bar across the studs here. And the reason for that is because I want to torque these bolts to 188 foot pounds. Torqued. So now it's time to clean the caliper bracket. To do that, of course, we need to remove our pads. We're gonna remove these tins right here. Grab your caliper slider with the boot. You can remove it just like that. We're gonna take the boot completely off of this. Sometimes it comes off easy. There we are. Just check it, make sure it's not torn. We'll clean all this up in a minute. This caliper slider is definitely gonna need to be cleaned up along here. So now we have our stripped bracket. As you can tell, it's still pretty nasty. Grab my cleaner, I'm gonna go right inside here. A little bit in this one. Got my board brush. Gonna clean off some of this extra extra debris here. All right, that looks pretty decent. Now I'm gonna continue on with one of these sanding cookies. I'm gonna go right along this area, right where those tins were. That looks pretty decent. Let's do the same to the rest of the three. All right, so that looks pretty great. Let's move along to cleaning up our boots. I'm just gonna use a tiny bit of parts cleaner right on my rag. Slide it right through just like that. I'm gonna take my boot, I'm gonna spread it, and then just kinda of wobble it around and try to get out any grease or crud that might be inside of it. Take a look. This one looks great. Double check, it's definitely not torn anywhere. If it's torn, replace it. Do the same to the other boot. So now it's time to clean up our caliper sliders. Just take that rag, wipe it down. If you have any rust or rot buildup along here, you wanna make sure that you clean it up as good as possible. And if it's uh, severely pitted, you'll probably need to replace these. If they look decent like this, you're doing all right. Something to pay special attention to is right along this area right here. If this isn't cleaned out, you're gonna get moisture getting through there. It's gonna get inside this boot area, and of course inside the bracket, and it's gonna cause major issues down the road. Let's take this to the wire wheel and get it cleaned up. 
So we've got our caliper sliders nice and cleaned up. You can see that area looks perfect. Now I'm gonna use a little bit of this synthetic molly grease and go right up on here just like this. Okay, nice and thick right along that area. And then I'm gonna also bring it up so it goes right up into that lip. And that's very important. As you bring your boot up, you wanna make sure you get grease up along that lip and then inside there, and then give it a little spin. That's gonna help make sure no moisture gets inside there. That's very important. Let's go a little bit more grease on this. Slide it in here. Now at this point, you wanna make sure that you also get grease up onto this lip. So as you can tell, there's plenty on there. It's making its way. Slides right up. Give it another little twist. And we're gonna do the same to the other side. Now we're gonna move along to putting a little bit more of that caliper grease right up along the areas that we just cleaned off. That's a lot of, that's a lot of grease. We don't need that much. I'll get a gloved finger so I can do this. Obviously you don't wanna do it with a bare finger. We're gonna coat all these areas the same way. It's time to install our tins. Something that's important to notice is that there's gonna be two different types of tins. When you're installing these tins, you need to have this long area facing down and the hooky-do side facing away from the rotor. All right, install it just like that and then we'll continue on. We've got our caliper bracket bolts, but we also notice that there's a lot of thread locker, so let's clean these up. So we've got our caliper bracket, got our two bolts nice and cleaned up, a little bit of thread locker on there. We'll bottom these out. We'll torque this to 203 foot pounds. We've got our brake pads. Just make sure they move around. If they don't move around very easily and you had to knock them in with a hammer, you probably didn't clean up your bracket enough. Grab our caliper. I'm just going to take one of the old pads, I'm going to lay it in here like this, and then I'm going to use my caliper depression tool, and you need to have one that's going to press on both of these pistons at the same time. If you push one, the other one will come out, push on that one, the other one comes out. So just grab something that'll work with both of them. Okay, feels like they're all the way in. Get this out of here. Take a look. That looks great. Use some of this caliper grease right along here, here there and then of course also along these pistons and this is going to help with noise reduction and vibration dampening get the caliper up on here there it is Let's snug them up Let's torque these to 55 foot-pounds. So now it's time to clean up this hub surface where the wheel's going to mount onto. You can use something as simple as a brush, which you're probably going to need. And I also like to use something like this, which has a nice sanding disc on it. That looks pretty great. Let's continue with the brush. Obviously it's not as clean as with the sanding disc, but as long as we can get off the big chunks so there's no raised areas, you're doing all right. It's also important to make sure you clean up the area of the wheel where the uh, hub's gonna ride. That looks pretty decent. Now it's time to get the wheel back up on here. You're gonna to wanna to be careful because it's super heavy. Send that in as far as it'll go. Now we'll grab the second wheel and we're gonna make it so the valve stems on the opposite side. Okay. Make sure you have those opposite from each other. Crisscross. Let 
Let's torque our lug nuts to 165 foot-pounds. Torqued. It's time to get the wheel cover back on here. You want to pay special attention to the direction where these are aiming. Obviously this one's going to want to go to right there and that one to here. So pretty much just line those up. And then of course make sure that these slots also line up with that area. Right through there. Get this one through here. Magically. Just like that. Let's snug these up. I like to hold this so it can't go too far in case it decides it wants to spin. That's good. Beautiful. We're back underneath the vehicle and it's time to check the rear differential fluid. To do that, you use a 3 8 ratchet. Remove this plug. I have a collection receptacle on the ground to catch any fluid so I don't pollute the environment. Okay. It's a little low. I'm going to add some. Let's just add some of this. Obviously, you want to use your manufacturer specified fluid for this. There we are. That's full. I'm going to plug it back up. I'm not too worried about wiping it down because I'm going to bring down the vehicle. I'm going to tip the differential using some uh, jack stands. We'll do that. I'll show you how. And then we're going to come back under here and we're going to recheck it. Okay, so we're back underneath the vehicle and I want to show you what we're going to be doing now. We're going to take this jack stand and we're going to put this end right about here. And what we want to do is we want to make it so this wheel is going to be up off the ground. At least approximately, I'd say five to six inches higher than the ground. And that's going to tip the differential like this. With the differential tipped, it's going to allow fluid to come down through the tube and lubricate those bearings down on that end. We're going to let it sit for approximately 5 to 10 minutes like that, and then we'll jack it up and switch it over to the other side so it's tipping in the opposite direction. Wait another 5 to 10. Perfect. Get everything back down, level on the ground. Recheck our fluid. Once that's good to go, we'll take it for a road test. Okay, let's start tip tipping that differential. That looks pretty great right, like that. Okay, let's switch this. Now let's let this sit for another five to 10 minutes. I'd say that's been long enough. Back into the vehicle. Let's check it out. Should still be full. Oh yeah, still full. Perfect. Wipe it down. Beautiful. Let's get inside the vehicle and pump up the brake. Feels better already. Beautiful. Let's also check our emergency brake. That's perfect. Goes down approximately halfway, but doesn't reach the floor. Now let's get out and check our brake fluid. Here's our master cylinder. You can see the maximum level. Give it a shake. If for some reason it happens to be low, you can look right on the cap and it says to use DOT4 brake fluid. That's what I would use to fill it. 